Seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. And it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. This is our time for a children's moment, which is not just for the children, I guess, but for the child within each one of us, as I say fairly often. You know, uh, We're going to talk today about roots. Now, I grew up in Central Texas, and there's a couple of things that I remember about growing up. First, I remember Johnson grass. And Johnson grass, it would get up about this tall, and it would be my job to go out on the side of the road and chop it down. I would try to pull it up, but that was very difficult because Johnson grass had some amazing roots that didn't allow it to be moved. And then I met some ranchers who wanted to get rid of mesquite trees. Now, the reason they wanted to get rid of the mesquite trees is because the mesquite tree's roots went down so far that when we didn't have very much rain, it had a tendency to pull the water out of the stock tanks, which wasn't a good thing. I say that in order to say this, your roots are important. You'll hear in today's scripture about, about seed that falls on bad ground and seed that falls on good ground. And the seed that falls on the good ground takes root and it grows and it bears a crop and it bears more seed for more. We're supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be that kind of plant with that kind of root. So make sure your soil's good. Make sure you're listening well. Make sure you're doing what you need to be doing and stay cool this summer. Let's pray. Most gracious God, thank you for giving us good roots, roots that spring forth from your love, from your care for us, and for the life that you pour into us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to remind you, as we do at this time every week, that at this point in our service, if we were here, we would be, we would be taking up food. Our children would be going out. They'd be gathering food for the Bethany Food Pantry. You can still do that. You can still do that either by sending in uh, a, an offering to the office that has Bethany Food Pantry on, on the, the note, or, or by bringing some food up here and just leaving it on the front porch. We'll take care of it. We'll get, we get some every week. Don't we have pretty much a full box? Almost every week we have a full box to, of food already to take. In addition to the offerings that people are making, that is such a blessing for the people of Austin, especially those who need it. So thank you all very much for doing that. Thank you for your care. 
Thank you for your love. Our time of prayer is now too. And we lift up our joys and our concerns. And we have a, a lot of birthdays to celebrate at this point. And that's pretty cool. I like that. First, Carlin Witt has a birthday on the 11th, as does Leo Schaub. Marilyn Woodall's birthday is July the 12th. Kim Pate celebrates on July the 13th. Ray Kreznik cel celebrates on July the 16th. And Nancy Watson celebrates on July the 18th. To all of you, happy birthday. And may this next trip around the sun be filled with blessing and wonder for all of you. We have a couple of other uh, concerns or needs too. Missy Bernal, who we've been lifting Missy up in, in our prayers, but her uncle, uh, Ramon Galindo, passed away. They were very close. I ask you to lift up prayers for their comfort and healing and strength. And then also a friend of mine uh, in Texarkana was just admitted to hospice care. Her name is Mary Pfeiffer, and I would love your prayers to go up for Mary. Uh, special, special, wonderful family in Texarkana. And I uh, ask you to lift up Mary and her daughter Crystal, as well as the rest of the family. Something has been basically a theme for my week this week, and it has been, you know, what is our response to suffering? And it has been very pronounced this week. And I found this statement from Nadia Boltz Weber, her book, Pastrix, and it says, she says this, this is our God, not a distant judge, but a God who weeps, a God who suffers not only for us, but with us. Nowhere is the presence of God amidst suffering more salient than on the cross. Therefore, what can I do but, but confirm and confess that this is not a God who causes suffering? This is a God who bears suffering. I need to believe that God does not initiate suffering. God transforms it, and he transforms us. Let us pray. Most holy and loving God, we thank you. We thank you for, for the, the word that you have spoken into our hearts the word of love and grace in Christ Jesus, our Savior, which, which functions as the soil that we sink our roots deeply into so that we may flourish and share your love. Help us to do just that, Father. In the midst of everything that goes on in this world, let us be those who proclaim love. Let us be those who reach out. Let us be those who speak words of encouragement and comfort. For that's what you do for us. Hear our prayers. And hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
There are days when I feel the best of me is ready to begin. Then there are days when I feel I'm letting go and soaring on the wind. As I've learned in laughter or in pain how to survive, I get on my knees. I get on my knees. There I am before the love that changes me. See, I don't know how, but there's power when I'm on my knees. I can be in a crowd or by myself almost anywhere when I feel there's a need to talk with God He is Emmanuel when I close my eyes no darkness there there's only light I get on my knees I get on my knees There I am before the love that changes me See, I don't know how, but there's power in the blue skies In the midnight when I'm on my knees, I get on my knees, I get on my knees, here I am before the love that changes me. See, I don't know how, but there's power when I'm on my, when I'm on my, when I'm on my That was beautiful, Ian. Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and verses 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. 
As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. May God bless this reading of this word. Thank you, Tricia. And thank you, Ian and Jeff. You know, another great part about being here in person, even though it's just a tiny crowd, is that even if it's one by one, we get to see new people, you know, new people to us again. So it's so great to see you in person, Tricia. And if you want to sign up to be a worship leader, let us know. Uh, reach out to Jane Keene or Christina, and we can make that happen. Uh, and I would love to see you in person, too. I found a list of wise sayings from farmers. Let me read a few of these for you. Keep skunks and bankers at a distance. Life is simpler when you plow around the stump. When you wallow with pigs, expect to get dirty and always drink upstream from the herd. The farmer or sower in our story has sometimes been called the careless farmer because he sowed seed everywhere. Actually, I like what W. Paul Jones called him in Friday's devotion. He called him the extravagant sower. And as we move forward through this sermon, remember God is the sower or the planter of the seed. The seed is the good news of the gospel, and we are the soil. I encourage you to think about the different types of soil that are mentioned while also considering this question. What kind of soil am I? This sermon is called Taking Root. In verse 4, we heard Tricia say, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the hard beaten path. Sometimes we are hard hearted recipients of the seed. What prevents us from embracing the good news of the gospel? Perhaps we've been conditioned to think inside a small box. Mahatma Gandhi led the nation of India through the process of gaining independence from Great Britain. And he believed one of the biggest challenges of the independence movement in India was not the British, but the mindset of most Indians themselves. Gandhi knew that his people had such a low opinion of themselves that many believed they deserved to be ruled by the British. Unfortunately for them, the British knew this too and used their attitudes against them. So Gandhi set out to show India a different way of thinking, one that spoke to their souls and called them to greatness. The people of India earned their independence in 1948. Have you somehow allowed yourself to become boxed in 
and hard-hearted. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Sometimes we are shallow-hearted recipients of the seed. In pro baseball, coaches talk about the morning glory syndrome. Morning Morning glory flowers were given their name because they bloom early in the morning and then they fade throughout the day. So this name, morning glory, is given to young baseball recruits who bloom early during spring training down in Florida or in Arizona, but then as the long major league baseball season plays out, they start to wilt like a morning glory flower. I know we have to recognize that this this year it won't be a long major league baseball season. But the question remains, Have you allowed your faith to wither like a morning glory flower? Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. This is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. Sometimes we're half-hearted recipients of the seed. William Wordsworth wrote this at the beginning of the 19th century. The world is too much with us. Getting and spending, we lay waste to our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away. Is it any different in the 21st century? In our culture, we love to wear busyness as a kind of badge. Martin Marty called busyness a spiritual disease that leads us to believe the world can't get along without us. How busy are you? Are things crowding in and taking up your time and energy that are not that important in the long run? Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth gain, grain, excuse me, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. As for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Sometimes we are wholehearted recipients of the seed. By the time Mother Teresa passed away, she was known throughout the world. But who would have ever thought she would become so influential when she first began? Mother Teresa told her superiors, and some I'm sure many of you have heard this, but this is worth repeating. I have three pennies and a dream from God to build an orphanage. Her superior said, with three pennies, you can't do anything. I know, she said, smiling. But with God and three pennies, I can can do anything. Mother Teresa understood the principle of the seed. It takes very little. But very little blessed by God can yield an abundance that exceeds our wildest dreams. Can you see yourself among the wholehearted? This is God's dream for us all. Max Lucado says, The best thing we can do is become good soil. Have you given your heart and soul to God to become good soil? Rick Morley, an Episcopal priest and a good writer, had this to say 
about soil, about dirt. The uncomfortable reality is that I have good soil potential within me. And it's only a stone's throw from some seriously rocky ground and not far from the thorns and the weeds either. They are all within me. And depending on the day or the moment or the circumstance, I end up presenting one or the other. Jesus is asking us here to bring our best dirt so his way can take root deep within us. This isn't something that happens by chance. It's something we decide to pour ourselves into. We are charged with becoming good soil. So the life which Jesus sows may grow in us and produce an abundance. Will we become good soil? Let us pray. Holy God, we all have good soil potential within us. But it's so easy to get tangled in the thorns, lost in the weeds. Grant us the faith and the will to be good soil so that your word can take root in us as we work alongside you to reshape the world in accordance with your will and in your image. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. Seed that dies to rise in glory, may we see ourselves in you. If we learn to live your story, we may die to rise anew. We may die to rise anew. Gentle Jesus, mighty Spirit, come and flame our hearts anew. We may all your joy inherit if we bear the cross with you. If we bear the cross with you. As we heard in our scripture reading today and also in Greg's sermon, the seeds that are grown in good soil hear the word of the Lord and understand the word and bear fruit. As we come to this time of offering, may each one of us consider what it is that God is asking us to do with our gifts, whether it's our finance, our time, or using our talents. May we always continuously seek to understand and hear his word and bear fruit. Let us pray. Holy God, as we offer our gifts this morning, 
Help us to recognize that this is, is a chance to weigh in with you and, and to make sure, Lord, that we're open to you and, and what you're doing in our lives. And, and we're open to what you would have us do on your behalf. And as we offer our gifts of service, our material gifts, we ask, Lord, that you will be glorified. That's our prayer. And we pray always in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in an upper room, and he took bread and he broke the bread, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, saying, this is the new covenant, my blood spilled for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink from it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink from the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until his return. Let us pray. God, as we come to this table, and we have so much going on around us in the world and in our lives, may we take this time of pause and remembrance and think about the precious gift given to us. And as we take of this bread and we take of this cup, may it renew our spirits. May it give us the wisdom and the strength and renewal to get through the next week. And we know that you are with us. In God's name, amen. And it's our privilege to serve at God's table this morning and to remind you all are welcome at God's table. And it's our privilege at this time to join you as we all come together, at least in spirit, and receive communion, the Lord's Supper, together. Again, we want to thank you for joining us this morning, for spending this first part of your Sunday morning with us in worship. Uh, we also hope that you have a, a peaceful, I'll say instead, you know, how we've been saying peaceful, safe, uh, all, the, all the words we're hearing over and over, of course, we mean that too, but I hope you have a cool weekend too, which means we'll probably have to stay inside to do that. I know how much we love you and, and how much we miss you. And... Um, I can't wait until the day when we can come together again in person. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace and share the love of the living Christ with all who pass your way. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels, God uphold you.